AFC Wimbledon 2-2 against Sheffield Wednesday. A lot to unpack for this game. I feel like this was one of the best games of football I've seen in a while in terms of quality. For the most part, it was a very good game of football played by both sides. AFC Wimbledon stringing together uh, some good passes in the first half, but not really creating too many chances. Sheffield Wednesday stringing together some good passes, but were a little bit more positive with their football. Uh, with AFC Wimbledon, they were stringing together a couple passes among their back line, among their center mids. Um, but didn't really, you know, have as as much conviction in the chance creation. While Sheffield Wednesday were stringing together passes with Bannon, Deli Basharu and Wing in that triangle formation, Tiki Taka passing, and getting it up to Gregory and Patterson, respectively, more so than we got it up to Mabude and Rodoni. Uh, Mabude started off as a striker. When he did get the ball, though, he did struggle to get in behind. Uh, his intention, a lot of the times, was to drop deep, turn out, and beat his defender with pace. But the likes of Iorfa and Dunkley were able to stifle him. Uh, most of the time, Mabude would pass it back to Hardigan or pass it square to Chislet. But when he did try to turn, the likes of Iorfa and Dunkley were uh, were quick to uh, to recover. They were expecting that from Mabude. And I think Mabude was kind of a non-factor in this game. He switched with Radoni in terms of positioning. Um, Mabude went out to an outside attacking mid-roll while Radoni started off, or switched as that striker. And I think, while uh, Rodoni's not a tried and true striker, right? Uh, so he, it took him a little bit of time to get up to speed in that role. I think in that first half, aside from a, a good chance he found himself with a header from a good cross, an outswinging cross from Nesta Guinness Walker won the header over um, over Liam Palmer. Jack Rodoni did, and just a couple yards wide of the frame. Other than that. Aside from a couple of plays where he held the ball, he, he dropped deep to hold the ball up and play a Sal out wide or Mabude out wide. Uh, didn't really have that that uh, chance creation edge that someone like a Joe Piggott would have last season. And I think we're kind of struggling in that aspect in terms of chance creation. You know, strikers creating their own chances rather than having to depend on someone making the overlap or you know creating their own chance by taking a couple of touches into space and blasting it. Uh, I think Radoni certainly is more so, um, he's more adept at the outside uh, attacking mid position. But he found his stride in the second half with uh, the goal. Uh, he made a good run uh, towards the back post with a good cross from McCormick. I'll get into that later though. I want to go into chronological order. So first half, two decent chances from Wimbledon. The first one coming from a free kick from Anthony Hardigan from uh, about 14 yards out out from uh, in respect to the goal line on that left hand side outside the 18 it was a foul drawn by Ayuba Sal who I feel like was the man of the match personally even though he didn't get on the score sheet I'll get into that later as well Asal drew the foul great ball played in by Hardigan maybe just a little bit too far away from his intended targets uh, Paul Kalambayi I think was the one that wanted to get in there first and win the header just past him Ben Hedigan came flying in with like a kung fu kick to try to uh to steer it towards goal, but it was a little too far ahead of him, and the ball ended up just maybe two yards wide of the frame. It would have been placed perfectly top corner had it been another three yards towards the left. Around the 30th minute or so, Jack Rodoni finding himself with a header, winning a header over Liam Palmer, um, as I mentioned before, just a few yards wide as well. Uh, Sheffield Wednesday created a couple of decent chances. Their first chance of their first real chance of the half was converted after a couple of, of passes being strung together. Um, you know, Bannon Wing and Delhi Basharu were able to connect with each other throughout the game at times with that triangle formation with Basharu as that attacking mid. But in this case, it was Wing playing a square ball over to Bannon uh, just ahead of the midfield circle on uh, Wimbledon's half uh, defensively and. Uh, nobody closed closed down Bannon. Uh, the nearest person to the ball was Alex Woodyard, a good ten yards away, and he took a couple of yard. He took a couple steps forward, but then stayed rooted to the spot just in case Bannon would try to, you know, dribble his way around Woodyard. But Bannon, he he's always a he's a pass first individual. I think Woodyard should have just tried to close him down right away. Bannon had some space. He played Gregory at the top of the eighteen. Gregory took a really good first touch. To be fair, toward his left, slotted it. In the bottom corner, two Zanibs right. Not much. She uh, not much. AFC Wimbledon could have done there. That's just a typical Sheffield Wednesday goal. They're very. They're a very quality side on the offensive front. Even though they only had 11 goals and 11 appearances, uh, that is a particularly deceiving statistic. 
because they've created a lot of chances in their games. They just haven't, you know, put them away. Um, but they're very good in terms of chance creation. Lee Gregory is a very, very good striker. Not Hasn't had the best start to the season. Only three goals uh, going into this one in 11 appearances. But he is a dangerous individual if given space. Uh, and then a few minutes after that, it was actually a cross played in from Hunt, who, by the way, Hunt had the ball so frequently on that right-hand side. Guinness Walker got caught out too far forward. Notably, more notably in the second half, we'll get into that. But Hunt played a, a square ball down the 18-yard box, but it was bouncing. Patterson took it on the half volley and connected pretty sweetly, but it was actually uh, straight to Zanna who collected. Uh, Patterson actually had a, a goal as a, a chance, sorry, similar to that against uh, Bolton, but he actually you know blasted into the top corner and actually converted that one. But Zanev was able to collect this one. Uh, two chances for me this side in that first half. Uh, the second half was not end to end, but both teams created you know several chances. It was more on Wimbledon side. The first half was you know Sheffield Wednesday, Wednesday slightly edged them out. The second half AFC Wimbledon slightly edged them out, but not before uh, you know Sheffield Wednesday scored a second. Uh, Sheffield Wednesday connecting a few good passes together, played a ball out to the right hand side to Hunt. Hunt played a cross in. Callum Bayou was defending maybe a tiny push off, but I don't think it was enough. I think Gregory milked the contact, threw himself forward uh, amidst the contact, and the referee gave the penalty. He slotted it. Uh, so 2-1 to Sheffield. But after that, I mean, this is the AFC woman that we like to see. Resilience and persistence. The old AFC Wimbledon has returned. After that goal, AFC Wimbledon started to uh, to really ramp things up in the chance creation. Um I think, yeah, Aaron Presley came on as a substitute for Dapa Mabude. And while I did give Presley some stick in previous games, I think he played decent. You know, if you give him the service, he'll provide. He won a couple of headers, uh, including one header that he won, allowing um, Ayuba Sal to, to break on the right-hand side. And I think Asal drew the foul once again, I think, in that instance. I don't remember what happened in that one, but Presley won a knockdown for Asal in that instance. It was it was after uh, AFC won the uh, pulled the goal back. It was a few minutes after that, but yeah. So it was Che Alexander that played a really, really good ball. Uh, che Alexander is usually known for his ability to cross the ball into the box, but he actually played a really sharp ball down the uh, down the touch line, and uh, it was Luke McCormick who took one touch, squared it to Presley. Presley took it first time. A little bit too too much to the center though. But I think there was a defender on that far post and he saw that. So he tried to blast it with power and beat the keeper with power. Decent shot. Keeper beats it away. And then Guinness Walker uh, buries it on the rebound roof of the net. with uh, Put it with enough pace so that the keeper wasn't able to save that. So Guinness Walker getting on the score sheet. But I thought he was fairly sketchy defensively. I think he got caught too far forward at times and failed to track back on a couple of instances, allowing Hunt plenty of space on that right-hand side. And just after Guinness Walker scored, actually, uh, there was a really good double save by Zana just a couple minutes later. It was a ball played to Hunt. Uh, Guinness Walker got caught too far forward. Uh, Hunt played a cross in. It was def uh, it was deflected. Kalambai tried to stick a foot out, deflected off Kalambai, put some fizz out of the cross, but then it fell perfectly to Gregory, who tried to take a touch around Zanev. Zanev came out right away, made himself uh, a presence. But then Gregory couldn't get around and played it down to Delhi Basharu about 12 yards out. and uh, Or 10 yards out, actually. And then Basharu tried to take it one time far post. Zanev, uh, he went here and then immediately threw his body in the way and blocked the uh, ensuing shot. And then another cross came into Gregory, who tried to knot it in near post and... Uh, beaten away by Zanev, so good double save there by Zanev in that instance. 79th minute, Ayuba Sal takes it off of Brown, dispossesses Brown after a couple passes strung together. Brown too casual on the ball, Ayuba Sal dispossesses him, is away, and then he tries to take his defender 1v1 and tries to blast it, but it was a weak effort straight into the uh, hands of Wildsmith. Uh, I was a little disappointed with Aaron Presley in that situation because Aaron Presley hooked out wide for a back post, like a 10-yard little chip back post cross, which is what you come to expect from someone like Presley because he wants to win those headers. But I think in that case, Presley just, you know, fake one way and go near 
go near post and you know receive that pass short from uh from Asal. The reason why Asal took it himself was because nobody was open there. Uh, Presley was marked heavily by Dunkley. Sal took it on himself and didn't convert in that one. But AFC Wimbledon, from the 70th to 85th minute, it was, I shouldn't say it was all Wimbledon, but they were on the front foot. They were keeping possession for the most part. Um, in terms of the final possession stat, actually, for the entire game, it was 53% for Wimbledon, 47% for Sheffield. It was constantly like 1% or 2 or 3% more for Wimbledon throughout the game. And uh, they actually strung together more passes too. So I'm very impressed with how they played overall at Wimbledon. But anyway, that second goal, oh my god, that second goal was absolutely gorgeous. I mean, Ben Hennigan played a ball to Ayuba Sal who dropped deep. He laid it off to uh, Luke McCormick with the inside of his foot behind his body. It was like a really good flick on to McCormick. McCormick takes three, two or three touches. Back over to his right foot. Plays a perfect ball. I mean, you cannot wait it any perfectly, any more perfectly. Because it fell right to the foot of Jack Rodoni. Didn't bounce ahead of Rodoni. Just landed right on his foot. Rodoni made a good run towards that back post. And just slotted it into the near post. Nothing the keeper could do. As the cross was put with a lot of pace. So he wasn't able to recover. And it was just a perfect cross. And a really good run by Jack Rodoni. Who is not known to be a striker. But in that case, he showed his, uh, his instinct. His striker instinct. And was able to put it away. So overall, very happy with the performance today from AFC Wimbledon. I think this was one of their better performances across the season. Don't We don't have the result to show for it, unfortunately. But I think it was a well-deserved... I think 2-2 is, is the deserved result. I think both sides played really good football. It was a very good, very fun match to watch. Good quality of, of football being played by both sides. Uh, my man of the match is Ayuba Sal. He dispossessed uh, the center mids on like three or four occasions and you know he was very active on the ball too uh always looking to beat his man 1v1 he didn't always take his man on 1v1 at times he would play it back on the overlap or play it back to the center mid but i think ayuba sal as always was just he was a, he was a there's a term that we use in portuguese uh fogo no havo. it's a fire on the butt he he was all over the place man i love ayuba sal um but yeah, he's my man of the match for today. And, you know, it was a fun game of football to watch. I think this was uh, AFC Wimbledon's second best performance of the season. Their first best being the one against Oxford. Um, but unfortunately, no win to show for it. And now, as it stands, we're 17th. As Morecambe and Lincoln City were able to win their games respectively in, in general. I'm just happy to, to see that performance. So, that being said, thank you guys for watching. We'll see you guys on the flip side.